Okay, good morning, everybody. We will call to order the Board of County Commissioners for um, March 20th of 2018. And we will start by saluting the flag and we'll ask Mr. Dene to lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Thank you, Mr. Dene. Always a pleasure to see you. Madam Clerk, roll call. Marsha Burke Bigler Chair. Here. Kitty Jung, Vice Chair. Present. Bob Lucy. Here. Von Hartung. Here. Jeannie Herman. Here. County Manager John Slaughter. Present. Assistant District Attorney Paula Pirelli. Here. And I'm Jan Galassini, Chief Deputy Clerk. Madam, you have a quorum. Thank you. Mr. Manager. Madam Chair, next item is item three, which is our public comment. Com comment heard under this item is limited to three minutes per person and may pertain to matters both on and off the Commission agenda. The Commission will also hear public comment during individual action items with comment limited to three minutes per person and comments are to be made to the Commission as a whole. Uh, for some reason, I am not seeing whether or not I have public comments. We do have public comment. Um, Tammy Holt still. All right. Let me join this and see if I can't get it to come up. Aha, there I got it. Yeah. Good morning, Ms. Holtstill. Ms. Holtstill has some newspapers that I will distribute to the board and place on file. Thank you. Good morning, Tammy Holtstill, Lemon Valley Swan Lake Recovery Committee. The water's still there, I'm still here. Or when the water's gone, I'm gone. Hopefully. I'd like to start off with, I imagine all of you have seen this. It, pretty much states that even though you are not in the lawsuit, that you do about it. So us residents weren't too far off base when we were in front of you way back when saying, there's a problem. It's time for you to start listening. We're not stupid people. We know we've been doing our research. We understand. And it's time for Washoe County to start stepping up to the plate and start doing the right things. I know I've heard $7 million has been spent in Lemon Valley, but let's break it down. $2 million, over $2 million was paid by the state of Nevada for the HESCO barriers. Over $633,000 was spent to save the sewer plant, which is in violation of Nevada Administrative Code and also Washoe County Code of Development, being in a Zone 1 flood zone. So there's a lot of money being spent on and accumulated and used as boasting this up when it's not true. Well, it's true you spent the money, but it's not assisting the residents. It's assisting you. So. When we talk about assisting residents, one of the things that was talked about and mentioned back when I wasn't here that day, I had somebody else covering for me, was in January that um, Commissioner Herman's proposal be put on the agenda to be spoke about. We are now in the, towards the end of March, and it hasn't been put on the agenda yet. I'd like to know why. I'd also like to bring to the county manager's attention when you go out to the website and you look up, it says uh, fire Washoe County when we're looking at the agendas and everything. It states Washoe County fire and the board of commissioners. But when you click on the agenda, it only brings up your agenda, not the fire agenda. So it countered it. it says it starts at 9 o'clock, but then the amended thing said it started at 10. So there's a conflict there that has got an issue with the website that needs to be addressed. Um, what else was there? Um, I'm looking forward to what happens with the city of Reno. Washoe County is not out of the woods on this. So one of these days, I hope that Washoe County does do the right things. I do know for sure that as we drove by that the uh, Deodore was getting some road base done on it because I'm pretty sure you guys are expecting that Lemon Drive is going to close, which I already told my son today, if you're driving, you might want to go the other way yeah. after it starts raining. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sam Dene. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sam, DNA, Dene, 
the heart and soul and the body and mind. I waited a long time. Now I get two public comments within one after another. I'm an Air Force Academy graduate. I spent many years flying fighters and bombers defending our nation. I was a pilot for Pan American, the greatest airline of all time, not in her head, Pan American World Airlines that was blown out of business over Lockerbie, America's first 9-11 and nobody cares. The world is treating Pan American the way, well, the way uh, Reno treats Sam Denae, one of the greatest things of all time, and you act as if they didn't exist. It's, that is a really a tragedy to our nation that Pan American Airlines doesn't exist anymore. Uh, hurts my soul. And that's just not because I was a pilot with him. I thank you again for having the law enforcement people here protecting Sam against uh, potential perfidiousness out in the audience. That makes me feel good. Actually, out, outside we have the chief sheriff and some other deputies so and another policeman over there. So this is great protection today. I appreciate that. Uh, I just noticed that, that this Wild Creek um, golf course um, operation group of about, oh, I guess a thousand citizens over there took my advice and they've started a lawsuit against the school board, against you guys, against Reno and Sparks and whoever else, against everybody they can find justifiably because what the school board and their cronies want to do is build $180 million, they must spend $180 million building a $40 million high school. This is absolute absurdity, crazy, stupid. They hopefully will have honest court, honest judge, honest jury, and they'll say no. And then they, and the people who are perpetrating this stupidness will have to pay for all of the problems they're causing to those thousands of people over there because it's going to be, end up being a jackhammer program for four years in their neighborhood. And then after that, for the rest of their lives, drive by, drive by shootings right in their neighborhood. Oh, just the horrible things that you don't want. It's wrong. There's too many better places to put that, that school. This is just in, insanity, insanity. And how do you not recognize it? I know that the pe people paying your campaign funding and all that people, you, you have to kowtow to them because they're the ones that are going to make money off of this scheme. This is absolutely crazy. Last but not least, I want you to investigate the Reno Gazette. They are, uh, they are a taxpayer-funded, law-breaking, election rigging operation and they should be investigated all of the money in these things that you see in the paper every day these are mandatorily paid by the citizens and that's how they operate they are a public body they should have to have open meetings just like you so sam can go down there and castigate them justifiably you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome thank you Good morning. Good morning. Elise Weatherly, Washoe County resident. I first want to say thank you to Mr. Denae for having the courage to stand up here and tell the truth. And I know I look bad today, and the reason is not just because I'm sick, because I got some more bad medication from a doctor. This happens a lot around here. Um, I tried to fight a doctor for myself, for my mother, for my mother's friend, and got nowhere. So what I want to talk about today is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I confronted a nonprofit organization recently. By the way, that was where I met at, um, one of the police officers, the chief, many years ago. They had made a mistake and they would not listen to me. And so finally when I confronted them with the truth, I had a man that actually listened to me and is not forcing me to take him to small claims court. When I mentioned what this uh, society had done to me and my brother, they listened and they gave in, okay? We can talk for hours, and I wish I had more than three minutes, about local bad businesses. Um, I can talk to you about some good ones like Fine Vine Wines, who um, are, have to have expensive business licenses designed to help casinos. Okay, I found that out from another wine place. And so I want to know how we can overturn some of these cabaret licenses so these small businesses can ha bring in musicians to play for them. We can talk about the local school system, which is a total disaster, which um, students understand that it is a disaster, and I'm telling them, please, grow up and change these laws. We can talk about the ACL uh, ACLU defending a student 
student from McQueen High School for um, going into Mark Amity's office and having vulgar, disrespectful language, which he was suspended for two days for doing so, because it's not right for a kid to do that. But ACLU stepping in and saying, oh no, you're stepping on the rights of a student. He can go um, be as rude as he wants to, as disrespectful to other people. This is not true. I can talk to you about a job opening online where it's a medical receptionist that has to make sure that people pay up front, but she has to speak Spanish in order to do it, otherwise you cannot apply for the job. Um, I can talk about a picture that I took at the Catholic Drop-Off Society Center of an employee outside smoking. You know, a really nice uh, presentation of who she represents. Remember my no vote yesterday for that Catholic uh, nonprofit organization for the million dollars that they wanted to feed people like me that I would say, no, I would vote no for them. I can talk to you about some local businesses that start churches and they go in there and they pretend like they're really out for your good interest while they're telling you lies and ripping you off. And guess what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be telling the truth, telling the, the public what they did to me and my grandson and asking for some refunds. And if they don't get it, I will go public. So I think the nice thing about this is I can make a public comment about a whole bunch of public things. And at some point, um, I will stand up even though my brother says I'm taking my life in my hands like Dorothy Kilgallen did. I think it's worth it. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Honorable Judge Elliot Sattler, please join us. <clears throat> and welcome. It's nice to see you here this morning. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Madam Chairman, Madam Vice Chairman, other members of the Commission. Thank you for having me today. My name is Elliot Sattler. I'm the presiding judge in Department 10 in the Second Judicial District Court. About 15 years ago, I got involved in a local program. It's the high school mock trial competition. I was a prosecutor in the district attorney's office. And since I've been in the program for the last 15 years, I can tell you a little bit about what it is and a benefit that's coming locally to Reno in May. The high school mock trial competition uh, is occurring all across the country and in other countries as far away as South Korea. There are approximately 30,000 high school students who are involved in the program. And what they do is, is that they get a fact scenario, they get a modified version of the federal rules of evidence, and they actually conduct trials. If you are concerned about our youth, I would suggest that you come down to the national finals for the mock trial competition, which is being held May 10th, 11th, and 12th in Reno, Nevada. Reno is the smallest city ever to host the national mock trial competition. It usually, it usually goes to places like Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Raleigh, or Orlando. Uh, in 2013, the state bar began a process of applying for the national mock trial competition to come here to Reno. In 2015, we were awarded the national finals. So May 10th through the 12th, we are actually having thousands of young students and their families and their coaches from all across the United States and from other countries coming here to Reno to participate in this worthwhile program. What the local bar has done, or the local bench I should say, is basically close down all of the court rooms. The courts themselves are still gonna be opening and functioning, but the court rooms are gonna be open to the high school students on Friday, May 11th and on Saturday, May 12th. That's the family court, the district courts, the justice courts, and the federal courts. We are going to be having approximately, I think it's 28 to 30 trials going on simultaneously throughout the local area with these young high school students. And again, I cannot tell you how impressed you will be with the students if you come down and watch them. Uh, as a trial attorney and a trial judge, I can tell you that some of the kids that you see are better than some of the lawyers that you might see if you were to happen into a courtroom. So it's a, it's a really heartwarming and it's, it's a really rewarding experience for the judges. I've had the pleasure of being the national, or excuse me, the state finals judge, so I get to see these young kids from across our state uh, and watch how they work. I would encourage you all to come down on May 11th and May 12th. Um, I believe that the state champions are from Las Vegas this year, they're not from Reno. It's not that we don't try. We've got some great teams up here in the north as well. Uh, but you will see students from all across the country. The finals are the 12th. They're going to be held in the federal courtroom. Judge Dew is giving us her, her courtroom. There's going to be a reception uh, that you can go to if you'd like to. There's one for the adults and one for the kids. I would encourage you to go to the adult one. Um, but have a good time. Come down and see us. And if you have any questions, um, I've given you a card that you can look at. Uh, please come down. Please watch the kids and please support us as we bring this great event to Washoe County. I had nothing to do with bringing the event here, by the way. Uh, that was a state bar in Nevada. I'm just here to tell you it's something that you should come down and watch.
Thank you very much. Have a great day. To item number four. Mr. Manager. Sorry, Madam Chair, I was confused for a moment. Um, item four are our Commissioner County Manager's announcements, reports, and updates, requests for information, or topics for future agendas. Do you have anything? I'll Your go Honor? last. You want to go last? I'll go last. Okay. Commissioners, I see none of your. Oh, Commissioner Hartung. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I, I appreciate uh, the um, newsprint. It's great. Um, we all know that the Reno Gazette Journal always prints the facts, <laughs> and they never sensationalize. Never. That's all I have. Okay. Um, I have a couple of things since I see nothing from our Vice Chair. Oh, okay. All right. I'll, I'll do mine. So. Um, Washoe County Sober 24 program was selected for a National Lifesavers Award, and I think it's very important that we um, uh, get this out to the public. This is an excellent program, a really good program. And I know Commissioner Hartung, I believe you've worked with uh, on some of the issues related that, that Sober 24 works on also, and it's just a great program, and I'm really impressed with it, and Commissioner Lucy also. So. Um, I, um, I, I wanted to ask for an item to be brought back on our agenda. It, it doesn't need to be a big detailed item, but I uh, believe I sent you an, an, an email I received this morning, Mr. Manager, regarding the snow removal process in Incline Village. And I, ha I received a number of phone calls as well as several emails over the weekend um, and on Monday informing me that apparently um, we are not spending money to remove snow in Incline Village as we have in the past. And so I would like to have that looked into, please. And so if you could bring it back as a, an agenda item, I, I would really appreciate it. Um, I think that's all I have. So I now have Commissioner Lucy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have a quick question. Um, right now, what I'd like to do is have an item brought back for the board to discuss about um, the clerk's office. Um, currently, we have the clerk, clerk's office open from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. midnight uh, for marriages. But as we've recently heard in the news, all of the uh, late night uh, chapels are no longer open in downtown right. Reno. And so I'd like to have a discussion about the need to have a clerk open uh, after hours now um, there's really no need for it anymore, no purpose for it, and uh, just for when we're talking about efficiencies here at the commission, um, what we, you know, what I'd like to look at some of those and some cost-saving initiatives. So I'd like to bring that in, uh, the issue forward. Um, one other thing, I do want to reach, uh, do want to comment and say uh, thank you to obviously our Washoe County Roads Department um, through the storms this weekend. They were very beneficial. I, I know Friday I was out in my little tractor plowing snow for my parents and my grandparents. Um, and uh, I, John, is it, who was the individual that you took a ride with? Is it Don, who was in driver uh, name? I think his name is Don, who, seasoned veteran for uh, an amazing, he stopped and offered, didn't even know who I was, stopped and offered to help and what, how he could help me when he was plowing the drives up there. Phenomenal man. He, we're losing an amazing uh, uh, staff member in him. He's going to be retiring uh, at the end of this season, and, and but uh, looking to help him and, and many of the, you know, and he informed me one of the challenges that maybe we'd, we should look at is Washoe County. You know, snowplow, or, snowplow drivers don't have any rights. They don't have right-of-way issues by, by state law. They don't, very, very separate from our EMS. EMS has, you know, right of way challenges and different things like that. When cars are parked on roads, there's, you know, they bear the lie, the snowplow drivers, there's no protections for snowplow drivers for our county drivers. Huh. So um, something that we should discuss with them, and, uh, and, and he brought it up in our short brief conversation when he was offering to help me and found out I was Commissioner Lucy that he uh, brought it up to me. but. It's a very interesting topic. I think something that we should talk about is something how our snowplow drivers, because especially for your district in mm. Incline Village, where and when we have these severe storms and people are parked on roads and different things like that, there aren't protections for those drivers, which ultimately fall back onto the county and it creates liability for us. So I think it's 
something we should address and, and potentially, you know, affect statewide for all of our, for everybody who's affected by impact by snow. So that's all I have. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Lucy, Vice Chair Jung. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I have a couple of announcements. Um, one is that I was a lucky guest to the women's Washoe go golf course luncheon. Um, Commissioner Burke Bigler, my chair, was also supposed to be there, but her dog ended up in the hospital that day. Sorry about Duke. Um, but they were very happy to have us, and they had our names up in chalk. And I have to tell you, as your parks and open space liaison, they are performing according to the standards that we put for their contract, actually outperforming to a certain extent. We have no late fees. So it, it took a big leap of faith on our part to trust the end users of the golf course, which is largely the women there, um, who were the biggest advocates when we mm -hmm. were going to take it out to a, a formal bid. So they are very happy, and they did invite each and every one of you to come back and that you should call um, and they will have a VIP table for you and you can even speak if you would like. It was great. We had a ta taco bar and just very lovely. It's Miss Ford. I don't know if you remember her. She's 90. I sat at a table with three 92 year old women um, who golf on the daily. So it was really inspiring too. And they were wine tasting, trying to tell me. And I'm like, I have to go to meetings after this, guys. But they And they were wine tasting for the day and I, I just thought... Sick. <laughs> you are sick. Okay. You know that. Okay. The second thing is, um, I went to a breakfast this morning to represent us, and that was the Sounds of Faith Nevada Interfaith Association annual Nevada Prayer Breakfast. Okay. And um, what came out of that is Reno Town Mall, which holds our Sierra View Library. Rob Roth is R O T H with E. He is the owner, and he's already donated over a million dollars to us by keeping the library there. And it's a win-win, right? If the library wasn't there, the shops wouldn't be. The shops weren't there, the library wouldn't be. It's, it's a difficult situation. But um, Dave Asher, who is the head of the Buy Nevada First gift shop and visitor center, and now has expanded next to Burlington Coat Factory uh, to a Nevada marketplace, which is not the same article that you read this weekend or yesterday. Was it yesterday? This weekend about Buy Nevada wasn't working. That was the, was that's the statewide pro program. This is a whole different that he's Dave Asher started years ago. So he had a great idea. Why don't we do a resolution and get Mr. Roth here to accept it? Of course, Mr. Uh, District Librarian, I would need you to take this back to your board of trustees because they are their own board. Um, and at the same time, if we could tie in a resolution of thanks to the ribbon cutting of the new space at the old Burlington Coat Factory where this marketplace for all local made artisans and people who like to buy this sort, this, uh, these sort of special gifts that are only here locally, if we could tie that all in one, I think that'd be great. And I, I'm going to leave it to the library board to be the lead for that, if that would be okay. Um, because they, I don't have any jurisdiction over that. And then finally tonight, I will be representing you at McQueen High School. They're doing a gun violence walkouts and local politics uh, roundtable with the students. It's the journalism students that will be moderating. So I'll be one of the, I guess, local politicians that will be there to, to uh, that will be at 530. If anybody else, I'm sure they'd love to have you there as well. So that, that is all I have for now. Thank Good. you. Thank you, Vice, Chair, Vice Chairwoman. I appreciate it. And Mr. Manager, I understand you have an uh, announcement you want to make. I do. Let me uh, first give one. Uh, Tom Raymond is our snowplower driver that uh, Commissioner Lucy was talk, speaking of. And he, I did last winter, got to take a ride with him. And it's a very um, skilled profession as a snowplower. I would not want to try. Uh, uh, yes, it, it's. Yeah. And, and Commissioner Lucy is correct. Uh, much like um, you would, uh, or you are required to to pull over, move over. Um, snowplow drivers don't have that kind of right of way. So that is a, a, an issue that we need to look into. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, finally, uh, Madam Chair and mem members of the board, I received notification this morning that our own Commissioner Von Hartung has been selected by the Nevada Water Environment Association as their 2018 Public Official of the Year. Uh, Commissioner Hartung's passion for water and impact to the region were cited as key considerations. Um, and uh, this year, the other official, public official, to receive this award is Governor Sandoval. Wow. Uh, so the award, is, uh, will, the award will be presented uh, during the Nevada Water Environment Association's 2018 Awards Luncheon, which is on 
Wednesday, April 14th at the Sparks Nugget. Congratulations. Well, you know, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm humbled. I was surprised that out of all the people that they nominated throughout the state that they ended up with, with us. That said, um, none of this happens without the boards and commissions that, that we all serve on that support water initiatives. This board supported a water initiative from Krishna Pagila. Uh, the <clears throat> advisory boards from both Tumwa and Western Regional Water supported it. Uh, Western Regional Water, uh, which we have board members on, Commissioner Lucy and Commissioner Herman supported it. Tumwa, Commissioner Herman and Commissioner Lucy supported it. So th they just, you know, I, I, I happen to be the sort of the lead on it, but it does not happen. And, and really, this is, a, this is an award that the board really should share. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Hartung. And I want to tell you how um, this is quite an honor. And mm -hmm. I, I'm very impressed that you received it. Not that you don't deserve it. You certainly do, because water has been a major issue on your platform. And you have brought the issues of water to our attention, all aspects of water, from sewer all the way up to the clean stuff and everything in between. So um, I, I was more surprised than me. <laughs> I want to tell you how impressed I am, and thank you very much for all you do. So any, any other, Vice Chairman? Just, uh, Mr. Manager, can you get us the information for his luncheon so that we can be there to represent with him? And I, I have to say, tell Hurricane Sandy to back off a little bit. Two of the best-looking men in public office win the water award, I, I think. That they're, did you guys send in a profile picture and the whole bit? or what? <laughs> You have a portfolio. Congratulations. And richly deserved. And, and you took us kicking and screaming because we didn't understand what the heck you were talking about. With reclam we got to reclaim. We got to reclaim. I don't know what you're talking about. And then when you put it all together, I'm very proud of you, and I will be there. Thank you so much. You're welcome very much. Thank well, you, Vice Chair. I appreciate it. Okay, Mr. Manager, we are going now to five. Madam Chair and members of the board, our next item is item five, which is our presentation of excellence in public service certificates. Washoe County encourages lifelong learning and the professional development of all employees. Administered by the Human Resources Department, Excellence in Public Service is a series of certificate programs designed to support employee development and performance. The completion of these courses over a period of two years demonstrates the employee's commitment to continuous personal and professional improvement and to Washoe County's journey of excellence. And today we're very pleased to recognize that commitment. Our first recipient is Trish Dyer, Fiscal Compliance Officer for the Community Services Department. Trish can come on down. Uh, Trish has completed uh, Essentials of SAP for Financial Staff Certificate Program. Congratulations to Trish. Thank you. Thank you. And next, we have uh, Emily Latticer, Principal Account Clerk for the Assessor's Office. And Emily has completed the Promote Yourself Mini Certificate Program. And Congratulations. And now Kathy Maestas, Deputy County Recorder for the Recorder's Office, has completed the essentials of two, two programs, the Essentials of Personal Effectiveness and the Essentials of High Performing Teams Certificate Programs. Congratulations to Kathy. And Madam Chair, I would just close again, uh, just a reminder, um, we, we, we have a brief moment with the employees here uh, at the presentation, but really it, it is many, many hours of, of attending training sessions to complete these certificates. So thank you to the employees and also thank you to their supervisors and their managers for allowing them to, to um, develop themselves as employees for Washoe County. Leading this team and um, having so many employees who do great things for the county. Appreciate it. All right, we will move to proclamations. And I'm not sure who's, which proclamation I gave to which person. Oh, Cesar Chavez Day. Item six, as, as Commissioner Jung makes her way down, I will announce these. Item six 
are our proclamations and 6A1 is our proclamation proclaiming March 31st, 2018 as Cesar Chavez Day. And I know that Mr. Barbano was here earlier. He's, he's here. Right. He, I think he will join you. We'll let you back in. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, sir. All right, Madam Chair and the Commission. Whereas Cesar Estrada Chavez was born March 31st, 1927, on a small farm near Yuma, Arizona, that his grandfather homesteaded in the 1880s. And whereas in 1962, Cesar Chavez moved his wife and eight children to Delano, California, where he founded the National Farm Workers Association, NFWA, later to become the United Farm Workers. And whereas from the beginning, Cesar Chavez adhered to the principles of nonviolence practiced by MK Gandhi and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to support the end of suffering for farm workers and their families. And whereas Cesar Chavez conducted multiple 25 to 36 day fasts to reaffirm the United Farm Workers commitment to nonviolence as a necessary and effective practice to maintain self-respect while supporting their cause. And whereas on August 8, 1994, Cesar Estrada Chavez became the second Mexican American to receive the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor in the United States. The award was presented posthumously by President Bill Clinton. Now, therefore, the Washoe County Board of Commissioners proclaims March 31st, 2018, as Cesar Chavez Day. Mr. Andrew Barbano, another freedom fighter and uh, uh, labor activist, is here to accept it on his nephew Ramon's behalf. Good morning. Uh, my name is Andrew Barbano, and uh, we will be celebrating Cesar Chavez Day 16 on March 31st at Circus Circus. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, March 31st would have been Cesar Chavez's 91st birthday. And I am here to uh, deliver regrets from Ramon Chavez, his nephew, who lives here in Nevada. And uh, there are two very incident, coincident dates today. 66 year, um, 66, 62 years ago today, 52 years ago today, sorry, 1966, Cesar Chavez was in the middle of the fabled Long March to Sacramento from Delano, California to Sacramento to pressure Governor Jerry Brown and um, 66 was, was Ronald Reagan, uh, Governor in 66? Okay, Jerry Brown. They, were, um, they marched to Sacramento to get the California Farm Labor Act passed. And they did. Uh, farm workers have no rights under federal law. You have to have state law to protect of farm workers. So Uncle Cesar was on the long march in 66. Today his nephew Ramon on election day is I'm thinking politicking in Chicago and I do hope our friend Ramon uh, has, is wearing a bulletproof vest and has bodyguards with him if he's politicking in Chicago today. But I do thank you for this annual honor uh, the uh, local artist Eric Holland will be presenting another original watercolor. He did one a couple of years ago about the Long March. We will have a veteran of the Long March with us, Maria Zamora, who was a longtime resident here in northern Nevada. She's a member of the Cesar Chavez Nevada Labor Hall of Fame. She'll be installing another member of the Hall of Fame, the late Tony Mayorga of the Laborers Union. Maria was there with Cesar on the long march from Delano to Sacramento. Uh, the, my colleagues at the Reno Sparks NAACP will be registering voters as usual. The Northern Nevada Liter Literacy Council will be giving away Spanish language books. The menu will be authentic Mexican. And um, I'm sorry to say that Circus Circus's great macaroni and cheese will not be on the menu. But the Coronas will appreciate this one. We were at a labor banquet at Circus Circus last month. 
The macaroni and cheese was the most stellar thing on the menu. It was a great menu. Circus's macaroni and cheese is great, and it's especially flavorful with Ferrari Carano Cabernet Sauvignon. I don't think they're going to use this as part of their advertising. But I do thank you all for this honor. Uh, Cesar Chavez visited Nevada many times. The first time was in the early 1960s when he had a meeting with, former, uh, with future NAACP President Dolores Feimster at the Continental Lodge at Plum in South Virginia. He was here to advocate for farm workers years before Cesar Chavez became an international figure and years before Dolores Feimster became the matriarch of the NAACP. So the great one has a long history here in Nevada and we hope to continue it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barbano. No. That's yours. And so if you could stick around, we do our pictures all at the end after all the proclamations, because okay. we like everybody to watch everybody else get a proclamation and not leave. Everybody here needs watching. That's good. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and by the way, I am buying a table at the Cesar Chavez uh, dinner. So if anybody would like to sit with me, that's an open uh, invitation to any commissioners or anybody else that would like to sit at my table. Thank you. So if you could sit down. Mr. Manager, do you want to? I'm sure let's move then to item 6A2, and we'll do photos, as Commissioner Jung mentioned at the end. 6A2 is a proclamation proclaiming April 2018 as National Donate Life Month. And I know Commissioner Hartung um, will present this Dr. proclamation, Knight. and Dr. Knight, our medical examiner, will, will, will join him. Welcome, Dr. Knight. Thanks for coming today. Thank you. As you know, this is a... Uh, uh, a subject that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, it has affected my family directly. And uh, there's nothing more important than organ donation and signing up for organ donation and, and making your wishes known for the simple reason, um, and this sounds somewhat macabre, yet it's true, you never know when you're going to have to make that decision. And so it, it's, it can literally save numerous lives. So that said, uh, whereas registering as an eye, an organ, eye, and tissue donor in our country or state brings hope to all the 115,000 Americans currently waiting for life-saving organ transplants. Organ and tissue donation saves lives and heals lives. <clears throat> while cornea donation gives the gift of sight to those who have lost it, and whereas the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services estimates 22 people in the U.S. die each day because they don't receive an organ transplant, and every 10 minutes someone new is added to the organ donation waiting list, whereas an organ, eye, and tissue donor can save and heal more than 75 lives, and whereas 95% of U.S. adults support organ donation, but only 54% are actually registered as donors nationwide. In the state of Nevada, over 1.2 million adults are registered, which is 60% of the state's population, according to the last U.S. Census report. This means our state is above the national average of 54%, but under the highest designation states, which are close to 90%. And whereas Nevada Donor Network would like to help Nevadans lead the nation in donor designation with the help of Washoe County's residents, registering as an, as an organ, eye, and tissue donor is easy. And whereas being the only Nevada-based organ procurement organization, or OPO, Nevada Donor Network would like to bring hope to the 581 Nevadans waiting for a second chance at life. With the help of community partners such as Nevada Department of Motor Vehicles, <clears throat> Nevada Highway Patrol, Washoe County Regional Medical Examiner's Office, thank you, Dr. Knight, and more local organizations, we stand as Nevadans for Nevada and promote National Donate Life Month to save and heal lives together. Now, therefore, the Washoe County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim April 2018 as National Donate Life Month, signed by our chair, Marsha Burke Bigler. Thank you. Thank you. May I make a comment? Please. Wonderful. This is yours. Thank you. Sorry. Well, I just want to thank you, Commissioner, and um, 
all of you commissioners for highlighting this really important issue um, and for calling attention to Donate Life Month. Washoe County is going to be the first county nationwide and our medical examiner's office, the first medical examiner's office nationwide to participate in the Health and Human Services Donate Life Month um, uh, promotion for Let Life Bloom. And so you'll be seeing all kinds of flyers and promotional um, uh, features throughout the county. And we'll have a, a table event here. Several of our county departments are gonna be participating in National Blue and Green Day. So we're really excited about this. Um, and this dovetails with our mission at the Medical Examiner's Office to promote tissue and organ donation as best we can. So thank you again for this proclamation. Thank you. Thank you. Our next proclamation is item 6A3, um, which is a proclamation proclaiming the week of March 19, 2018 through March 23, 2018 as Nevada Moves Week. And I know Commissioner Jung is here, and I believe our other recipient may have had to have left. He, uh -oh. he was hanging around for a while, but I think he might have left. Okay, we'll be sure to get it to him. Whereas walking and bicycling to school reduces the number of vehicle trips in the vicinity of schools and potential conflicts between vehicles and pedestrians or bicyclists. And whereas reducing the number of vehicles driving students to school results in increased safety, reduced traffic congestion, improved air quality, and less fuel consumption in the vicinity of schools. And whereas the benefits related to physical activity at an early age played a leading role in reducing rates of heart disease, heart disease diabetes, and other obesity-related health problems among children. And whereas children getting active by walking and bicycling to school together with parents and caregivers opens opportunities to mentor children about pedestrian and bicycle safety and its benefits related to health and the environment. Whereas walking and bicycling to school offers an opportunity to build physical activity into both parents and children daily routines, and whereas children, parents, and community leaders around Nevada are joining together to get active and promote walking and bicycling to school during Nevada Moves Week, and now therefore the Washoe County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim the week of March 19th, 2018 through March 23rd, 2018, this week, um, Nevada Moves Week and encourages all citizens across Washoe County to walk, bike, or participate in an athletic event with their children while celebrating the benefits of increased safety and health this week and throughout the year and signed by our chair, Marsha Burke Bigler. Yes, parents, it's embarrassing to see you guys at your schools and all those long lines in your cars idling because your precious snowflake can't walk to school. And I know there are certain days you have, you're, you're, out, you're running by the gun, but I'm telling you, we have a childhood obesity problem in this community, just like all the com communities across the country. And we also, as your district health uh, chair for the Board of Health, have many times that we don't, we are on the edge of, uh, of gaining attainment from the Environmental Protection Agency, and we have to write large mea culpas to the federal agencies so they don't mark us as un unachieved, and that is mostly in the Washoe Valley Basin area. So um, I, I encourage you to walk your kids to school, to teach them how to walk to school. I love that our school system, based on age, you don't get a school bus when you live so proximate to public schools because they, number one, it makes more economic sense, and number two, kids should be walking to and from school. There's plenty of data to support that having that physical activity and that time to transition to get to school, whether it's a 10 minute walk, a 20 minute walk, they have less behavioral issues as well in the classroom because they burnt off some of that steam. And just that little transit, you know that. A, a commute into work is much better than like me, just to hop, skip and jump because there's no transition there. So I deeply encourage parents everywhere. And we have a, a sister school here, so I'm wondering if we can volunteer to walk with them to school. Um, and I know many of these kids walk to school. There's a real back and forth and a lopsidedness of those with means and those that don't, that if you, if you wanna go look at the lineup of the parents and the parents fighting with getting their car in place and doing it wrong and the whole bit. So I really do encourage that. There's nobody to take this today. So I w I'm certain that we will get this to the proper yes, person. I, I just checked uh, Officer Marcuson, who was here from the Washington School Police, police yep. had to leave, so. Right. Yeah, probably had we'll, better we'll things. We'll get that to them. Yeah. I think he had to go for a walk. He had to go for a walk. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm next for the next one, too. Uh, item 6A4 is proclamation proclaiming April 2018 as National Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention Month. And I know we have a number of staff members here um, who we would invite them all to come down. Some said they just want to watch, so. 
Come on, it looks better. The more, the merrier. Thank you. Not in your face. Oh, how cute. No, not at all. Director Hal, did you bring pinwheels for all of us? No, just for me. <gasps> <laughs> okay, whereas the Human Services Agency's Children's Services Division remains devoted to the well-being of our children by ensuring they live in a safe, secure, and healthy community. And whereas in calendar year 2017, 2,025 reports were made to Children's Services Division. The top priority is the safety of children, but Child Protective Services does work diligently to reunify children with their biological parents. And whereas the Children's Services Division has a 29% diversion rate from foster care placement by locating and screening relatives and fictive kin and placing children instead with their family. And whereas the first of its kind in the region, Family Engagement Center, opened November 2017 to provide an encouraging and natural home-like environment for parents and their children to visit. And whereas April is nationally recognized April 1st is nationally recognized as child abuse no, April is nationally recognized as child abuse and neglect prevention month. Every April, the Children's Services Division joins in the national effort to raise awareness. During the first week of April, hundreds of blue pinwheels will be placed by employees at Washoe County buildings. The pinwheels represent the joyful, carefree childhood every child deserves. And whereas, the public is encouraged to join the national effort by wearing blue clothing or a ribbon during the month of April. Now, therefore, the Washoe County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim April 2018 as National Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention Month to raise awareness about Child abuse, about child abuse and assist families in need of support. Signed by our chairwoman, Ms. Marsha Burke Bigler, and I. we do have our director of the Human Services Agency to speak, plus many other staff here that I'm sure would all like to say a word or two. Thank you so much, um, Madam Chair uh, and um, commissioners. This is a bittersweet topic for me, um, probably one of the most difficult uh, things that I'm responsible for in the county. But I want to end on a happy note. Um, a couple of statistics that I think are important. From 2011 to 2015, our foster care caseloads in Washoe County doubled. They went from 500 to 1,000. Mm. In the last two years, there has been a number of grants that we have applied for and initiatives that we have put together to stop the dramatic increase. We have reduced the number of children that have been removed from their homes by 200 in the last two years. And yesterday, we successfully reached the under 200, or 900 mark for children in foster care, decreasing from 1,000 um, to the 800 number, which is actually going the opposite direction that the national trends are going. So we are doing a phenomenal job of keeping children out of foster care and getting families the help that they need. So I'm proud to continue to serve as your director in Washoe County, and we truly are making a difference for children by coming together as a community and wrapping our arms around this issue, and we will continue to see a decrease in those numbers. Thank you so much for letting me serve in this role. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? No? You want to vote? Get there. I'll vote for my husband. Mm -hmm. Shut up. I'm Nicole Hicks. I'm the director of the Child Advocacy Center here in Washoe County. Uh, that is a partnering agency with HSA. And I just want to make sure that we recognize all the partnering agencies that um, wrap their hands and arms around all of the children within our community. Um, as I said, I'm from the district attorney's office, but we have many partnering agencies through the CAC and the multidisciplinary team approach to child abuse cases. Um, Reno Police Department, Washoe County Sheriff's Office, Washoe County School District, uh, Police Department, just the school district in general, um, Washoe County Sheriff's Office, Sparks Police Department, Crisis Call, HSA. So all of these different agencies um, do so much for the children in our community that are victims of child abuse and neglect. So thank you for the proclamation and the ability to speak. Good job, Ms. Hicks. Our next proclamation um, is item 6A5 on today's agenda. This is a proclamation proclaiming April 8 through 14, 2018 as National Library Week. Commissioner Lucy is here to present the proclamation and our library director is here as well. Oh, I get to play with my pinwheel anyways. I know. Amber did leave it for, Amber did leave it for me. Well, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners. 
I'm, I'm honored to be up here in front of you today to read a proc the, the proclamation for National Library Week. And we have Director Jeff Scott with us, uh, Director of our Washoe County Library System. So without further ado, whereas libraries are not just uh, about what they have for people or what they do for or with people. Libraries have long served and trusted as treasured institutions and library workers and librarians fuel efforts to better their communities, campuses, and schools. And whereas librarians are the leaders in their institutions and organizations, in their communities, and in the nation, and in the world, librarians continue to lead the way in leveling the playing field for all those who seek information and, accesses to, and access techn to technologies. And whereas libraries and librarians look beyond their traditional roles and provide transformative opportunities for education, employment, entrepreneurship, empowerment, and engagement as well as new services and connect closely with patrons in uh, with patrons needs and whereas libraries and librarians lead their communities in innovation providing steam programming make uh, maker spaces and access to training for new technologies and whereas libraries are pioneers in supporting democracy and affecting social change with a commitment to providing equitable access to information for all library users, users regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status. And whereas libraries lead in working with diverse communities, including people of color, immigrants, and people with disabilities, offering services and educational resources that transform communities, open minds, and promote inclusion in diversity. And whereas libraries, librarians, library workers, and supporters across America are celebrating National Library Week. Now, therefore, the Washoe County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim April 8th through the 14th of 2018 as National Library Week and encourage all residents to visit the library this week and explore what you're, you're, what's new at your library and engage with your librarian because you and your library leaders, because, because of you and our library leaders, libraries transform. Dated this 20th day, uh, 20th day of March 2018, signed by our chair, Marsha Burke Bigler. You know, I say it all the time that libraries are not just a place where we, st where we store our books and, and computers for our individuals. They really truly are our social get-togethers. They are our, our play, uh, safe places for many of our residents. They are shelter for those who are looking for a, a safe, warm place. They truly are um, a safe haven for all ideas in trans transformative um, thoughts and you know it's because of great director uh, great leadership from our director and our board of trustees for our library um, that we have such a wonderful library system here in Washoe County so it does give me great honor to read this proclamation Mr. Scott would you like to say a few words Thank you, Commissioner Jeff Scott, Library Director. I just want to thank all the commissioners for your support. Um, it's not just support from the general budget, but from the special district funds have helped us renovate our libraries, provide summer reading programs, and provide steam programs that our, our community really needs. And we really appreciate that kind of support. And thank you for this proclamation. Our Mr. Manager. Madam Chair, our next item, uh, our last proclamation is item 6A6, and this is a proclamation proclaiming April 8, 2018 through April 14, 2018 as National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. Commissioner Lucy will present this, and I know we have staff members um, and the sheriff. Sheriff Allen's back there. I'll get, we'll get him to come down here. <laughs> Dream, you gotta come down. That's right. <laughs> Can't just stand in the back and not get, you know. All right. Once again, National Public Safety Telecommunications Week, we, you know, this is the, obviously the third year I've got to sit up here and participate in this proclamation. And I, the, the, the relevant importance of this week is, is monument. These individuals are the individuals behind the scenes that, um, make sure that our public safety officers, our EMS officers, our, um, our first line defense to make sure that our citizens are safe every day, 
This is, these are the individuals that make sure that that happens. They're, they're, they're the ones that make sure that our radios are working, you know, the innovations are there, the, their cost-saving initiatives, they're, they're doing, they're working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they miss uh, holidays with their families to make sure that we remain safe. And, and if they go uh, without gratitude more often than not. And so it's, it's a great honor for us to, to recognize these individuals during the National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. So whereas behind every emergency response that takes place in Washoe County, there's a team of dedicated professional communication specialists who are often the first and most vital link between our citizens and emergency services. And whereas Washoe County communication specialists are the lifeblood of information for more than 500 public safety personnel 24 hours a day, seven days a week, providing a critical safety service to Washoe County Sheriff's Office, the Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District, the North Lake Tahoe per, uh, Fire Protection District, Reno Sparks Indian Colony Police Department, the Pyramid Lake Par uh, Tribal Police, the United States Department of Veterans Affairs Police, the Washoe County Department of Alternative Sentencing, and after our services for the Washoe County School District Police. And whereas the 27 communication specialists and five supervisors who serve as the Washoe County Sheriff's Office Dispatch Center have exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during more than 1,500, oh, I'm sorry, one, let me get this right, 150,000 calls each service year covering an area approximately 6,700 square miles with over 110,000 res 110, residents. And whereas every Washoe County communication specialist is certified by an International Academy of Emergency Dispatch and in, in Emergency Medical Dispatch, Emergency Police Dispatch, and Emergency Fire Dispatch, so that they may provide a uh, substantial contribution to the apprehension of criminals, suspension of fires, and treatment of medical patients throughout Washoe County. And whereas, in honor of our county's less visible but vitally important first responders, the dedicated professionals, uh, uh, dedicated and professional communication specialists who are always ready to serve in the interest of public safety, no matter how difficult and stress stressful the circumstances. Now, therefore, the Washoe County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim April 8th, 2018 through April 14th, 2018 as observed as National Public Safety Telecommunications Week, dated this 20th day of March, 2018, signed by our chair, Marsha Burke Bigler. Thank you. You guys like to say a few words? Sure. On behalf of the Washoe County Communications Center, I would like to thank the Border County Commissioners and County Manager Slaughter for this proclamation. Thank you very much. Thank you. You do a great work. And I want to take a moment uh, Commission Chair and the Commission, uh, County Manager, thank you all for this proclamation this week. As you know, the men and women who serve in the dispatch center are the first ones who communicate with our citizens when it's that their worst day or something bad happening in their house, their neighborhood, on a street somewhere, asking for a police uh, officer, a deputy, an ambulance, or a fire truck. And so not only do they keep our citizens calm, during those moments of crisis, but they also empower us to get to those scenes uh, well informed and in control. And so um, we couldn't do our job without the assistance of these dispatchers. And, and, and Jen has heard me say this and, and to the other center uh, members as well, but uh, I take great pride in knowing what they do every day and um, we couldn't perform our duties as law enforcement professionals without their um, collaborative assistance. So thank you all for this proclamation. It means a lot to me. I know it means a lot to them. And it's very, very, very appreciative. Thank you very much. Thank you. Charlie Moore, for the record, uh, our dispatchers do a fantastic job. And the first thing they do is paint a picture for us and what we're heading to. And that's so invaluable for us to know what resources we need to send, but kind of the situation that we're heading into as well. So that's an important part of our safety. I can't say enough about our dispatchers. They're a phenomenal group of people. Uh, when we have a lightning bust, I've been in there to help, and I'll tell you why, it, it's, a, it's a crazy, crazy place. Uh, but they stay calm, uh, and, and they, they manage just uh, hundreds of calls coming in. So uh, it, it, I, I would encourage uh, all commissioners to go in and pay a visit to dispatch to see what they do, because uh, it really is a tough job, and they do it so, so well. So Jen, thank you very much. Thank you very uh, much. Um, 
Let's do our pictures, and if you guys will stay here, we'll start with you. Chief, Mr. Sheriff.
So, Madam Chair, we would be looking for action on item six on yes. your agenda today. Could, if I could have a motion Move to, to approve. approve the proclamations. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Jung and a second from Commissioner, I'm um, from Vice Chair Jung and the second from Commissioner Hartung. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please cast your, <laughs> all opposed. Okay, please cast your vote and then affirm your vote on the screen. Motion passes five nothing. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, the public comments. Do we have any public comments on this issue? I don't see anything on the screen, so. We do not. Okay. All right. Mr. Manager, we're moving on to number seven. Item seven is your consent agenda. Today we only have one item, which is item 7A, approval of minutes for the Board of County Commissioners regular meeting of February 7, I'm sorry, February 13, 2018 and February 20, 2018. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, uh, do I have any public comment on the consent items? I see none. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Please cast your vote. Oh, we don't do consent items. That's right. So motion carries, five nothing. And we are then moving on to number eight, Mr. Item Adam. eight. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, is not needed today for, for Washoe County. Okay. Just a reminder that the uh, fire board is still in recess for that item. Yes. So we'll remove that item from today's agenda. Item nine is public, our last public comment. Okay. Um, and I do have Miss Elise Weatherly. Hi, Elise Weatherly. Um, first of all, I wanted to say a personal thank you to Andy Barbano, not for the Cesar Chavez thing, but for being a really good neighbor and a really good friend to my mom. He and I have had many uh, long, interesting conversations, and I just wanted to tell him thank you for something personal. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is listening to what you guys have to say. Um, I really like programming. Programming is very logical. What you have to do is you have to have things that make sense, otherwise the end product is bad. So I want to bring up a couple of logic errors, okay? The gun violence thing, uh, Noah Christensen was the high school student at McQueen that was violent to Mr. Amaday. He was suspended from school, and uh, yet the ACLU is going to stand up on his, in his defense to say he had the right to do that. Well, the conflict of logic here is a school called Excel Christian School, who expelled a certain young man from defending himself against bullies by his words. Uh, the ACLU didn't stand up for him, and he got expelled, and the judge stood on the side of the uh, accused, which was unfortunate, but um, I do trust that God works all these things out for his, you know, in his way. The other thing is that Ms. Young said that she, Jung had um, attended the interfaith uh, meeting, yet scriptures are not allowed in these meetings, and so some are and some aren't. So the Bible is not allowed, but the other things that go against that are okay. And I want you guys to consider this. This is a logic error. All right, there is one person that says he's the ultimate authority. Do we allow his word to come into these meetings or not? I would say, yes, let's do that. Uh, Mr. Hartung does appreciate water, and I appreciate him. And Ms. Herman appreciates water, and I appreciate her. They know that it's not just a natural thing, it's a supernatural thing, right? And as far as the medical thing goes, thank you for doing that. Uh, it reminds me to go get my driver's license updated to give away these organs that could help somebody else. I don't know if you know or not, but John Dutch is um, in charge of the payroll system at UNR. He's a friend of mine. His life was saved because somebody donated their heart to him. Years ago, he got a heart transplant. Well, his wife saw me through some really hard times when I'd made a mess of my life. And you know what I did when she needed my help? Nothing. I just stood by. I figured, well, somebody else would take on that, um, you know, that duty. I've apologized to her probably a thousand times saying, please forgive me, Cheryl. And you know what? She does. And so I just want to say, um, as far as foster care goes, I would love the community to start helping the grandparents that are raising their grandkids with no support, not getting any foster care help. We need some help, too. It might be something you guys want to consider. Thank you for everything.
Good morning. <laughs> um, my name is uh, Kathy Brandhorse, and um, I am the United States President. Um, I uh, just wanted to let you know nothing's really been uh, corrected or put back together. Uh, I just wanted to tell you there's nothing going to be done about it, I guess, because uh, you lie. Yes, I heard you tell the police officers some stupid stories and get away with no chains uh, packed to your feet, and uh, you don't get the handcuffs because you lied, and you're not going to go to jail. You're not going to prison. You're not going to be destroyed. Uh, because the lies get bigger and bigger and bigger. They don't stand still, do they? Well, the police officer uh, is uh, not going to, I guess, have you arrested for jail, not arrested for prison, uh, because you already told the story. And the story is not true. But I just don't understand why you can't go to prison because you're already on death row. It shows in, uh, that you've been in prison. It shows that you've been in jail. It shows that you are on death row. And you're still going to walk the streets with your lies. So uh, what's going to happen you're going to go out there, you're going to murder more people. Oh, wow, because you're free, aren't you? More people are going to suffer because they have to be hung by the neck. They have to be also tortured to death. And you know what? The torture these people have to go through in order to stay alive, Boy, you don't know the pain that the humans go through to uh, have to be destroyed. But you're not going to sit back, are you? Yes, you are. You're going to carry your machete knives. You're going to sh carry your guns, your rifles, your high-powered rifles. You're also going to carry your machine guns to make sure that the police officers are all filled with bullet holes. And then you put them in lights. They burn. Thank you, Ms. Brandhorst. Seeing no further public comment, we will close public comment and bring it back to the board, Mr. Manager. Item 10, Madam Chair, is our Commissioner County Manager's announcements, reports, and updates, requests for information or topics for future agendas. Do you have anything, Mr. Manager? I see nothing from any other commissioners. No one has anything. In that case, we will consider the Board of County Commission adjourned, and we will meet upstairs to reconvene as the um, uh, Truckee Meadows Fire Board. Right? Did I get that right? <laughs>